Kenneth, Paul, uh, we'll start with Paul. I would like to go queue up for the second round as well. Fine. Okay, uh, it will be within the same cycle. Okay. Chairman, I would first ask about C1, C2, C3 and C4. I would like to lead the evidence to uh, take the evidence, take the witness to look at Gen 8. Gen 8 is the agreement, the, the funding agreement. Okay, could you, you know, uh, pause uh, uh, for a while so that we can find the uh, document. For Gen 8, Right. This is the uh, Mega Events Fund Agreement. There are several um, clauses that I'd like to refer members to. I'd like to refer to page 27, the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, I think Mr. Allen Leung already referred to 12.1 regarding <coughs> the records of the accounts which need to be uh, maintained for seven years. That's 12.1. 12.2. It's about the uh, audited accounts that is under A, if that, that is three months after the completion of the event, uh, the audited accounts will need to be submitted. I'd like members to uh, uh, draw members' attention to this point. Next, I'd like to take members to page 32, and there are several reports uh, here where, where it said that it has to which have to be submitted. 15.1 uh, said that unless otherwise agreed by the government, the grantee shall s submit the reports uh, uh, including 15.1D, uh, which is the evaluation report, a publicity report and a survey report. So I'd like to ask my questions in relation to these few items. First of all, uh, my questions for the administration. Last time, I think uh, they have already answered the, the question uh, to some extent. Of the 24 uh, events, have you ever approved any events for which the audited accounts have been submitted late? Deputy Commissioner. And how many had there been? Well, could, could we provide the, 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 the number after the meeting? Uh, we do have such records. So you have allowed them to submit the audit report uh, uh, beyond the deadline. And could you also tell us the, 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 the reasons for which you allow them to submit the audited account uh, be, um, after the deadline? Well, in most cases, it would be the auditors who require more time that is, after the organizer had uh, you know, compiled the accounts, the auditor will need to vet the accounts, and the, and the letter may require more time, and normally we, we would allow that. Uh, another possibility is that the organizer itself was slow in finalizing the accounts, and the audit report also had made reference to these non-profit organizations, which may uh, not uh, <coughs> uh, uh, be slow in preparing the accounts. I think in the past there have been 12 events for which we allow a late submission of the audit account. So it's 12 out of the 24. Well, the different types of reports, including the evaluation report, the publicity report, and a survey report, uh, according to Clause 15. In 15.1 said that you have the power to uh, postpone the deadline for submission. He said, unless otherwise agreed by the government. So you have the authority or the discretion to allow them to submit the report uh, <coughs> uh, after the deadline. But in 12.2, it said the grantee shall account for the project result. 
So the government does not have any discretion here for them to postpone the submission of the accounts. If you exercise your discretion, then I think you would be <coughs> have been negligent. You would have been negligent in 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 your role as the supervisor. What you would could allow them to postpone the the uh, submission report would be the evaluation report, the publicity report, and the survey report. So, could you tell us which for which of the items uh, the audit uh, the audit accounts were submitted late? And for which other events, uh, the other reports were submitted late. Next, I like to go to C uh, some question. I like to ask some questions relating to C three and C four. Mr. Leung, could you uh, tell us which which document we are looking at? Yes, I I know we are familiar uh, with the uh, background, but the others, uh, the witnesses present may not be so familiar. So could you give us the reference uh, document? I'm still uh, looking at page 37 of the audited, aud the, the audit report, C that is. And uh, but I would like to first ask uh, uh, some other questions. That is regarding C3 and C4. For these two. Events. Where uh, <clears throat> uh, could you tell us the exact days during which they were staged? January the first. So let's now. Uh, now perhaps I can ask Mr. Chinkam Lum this question. For C three and C four, that is uh, for 2013 and 2014, the. Uh, Dragon and Lion Dance extra, Extravaganza, that is uh, the events held in, in the last two years. I think you, you should still <coughs> uh, remember that. Could you, was there a big difference in terms of the scale and the programming of the events? Chairman, the events for these two years, we were basically able to, <coughs> to, uh, organize, to achieve the scale uh, as uh, proposed, as whether or not there have been any adjustments, we would uh, we we would report to the MBF. Upon receiving our report, the MBF will conduct a, a detailed uh, assessment. We have submitted all, all the detailed reports. I'm not asking about the time when you put in the application. The two events have been staged already. Now, as the organizer yourself, could you tell us? For C three and C four, what were the basic arrangements? What was the scale of the events? Uh, had there been any difference uh, for the event stage in those two years, Chairman? The content of the events were totally different. In twenty thirteen, we the, the theme we chose was. Uh, 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 a mascot, uh, uh, one mascot, and uh, for 2014, uh, we used the laughing Buddha uh, as the theme. So there were lots of differences. I would like to next refer to Gen 22. Uh, could you allow us some time to to find the uh, document? Perhaps you can first. Uh, now, Gen 22 uh, covers many documents, including. Sorry, I'll say this again. I'm referring to the project evaluation report. That's Annex A. Other than the project evaluation report, we also have a survey report, as well as a publicity report. There is also the auditor's report as well. Could members turn to? Let's uh, turn to page 194. 194. I must point out that uh, the auditor's report for this year was issued, was only signed on the May 8th of May this year. 
by the auditor. Compare this with the auditor report in previous years. Let's take a look at the auditor's report for 2013, and members may turn to Gen 7. Gen 7. Yes, that would be the same evaluation report for 2013 together with the audit report. On page 123, that report was signed on the 22nd of February. So one is signed in February, the other one is May, signed in May, so there's a discrepancy of almost three months. Last time when Mr. Chen Kam Lam uh, uh, testified, he said that he had submitted the audit report earlier than schedule. Because in the uh, funding agreement, you must submit the report before the end of March. Why is that you only able to submit the report on the 8th of May? Mr. Chen Kam Lam, could you uh, explain that, please? Chairman, originally, we were able to submit the accounts by the end of April on time. In early May, there have been a few public holidays. So at the end of April, I expected that we might be late. All right. I'm just trying to explain. No. Now, he, he mentioned the 31st of March. Uh, why, why do we now have the, the, the end of April? After we have finished, uh, staged the event, in January 2014, we receive a notice from the MEF informing us or reminding us that by the end of April this year, we, have to, we had to submit our report. We had received a notice. Based on this request, we have prepared all the uh, materials to be submitted in, at the end of April. Do we have that letter? Yeah, we do have that letter here. Could you copy that for, for the committee? So why did the day suddenly change from the 31st of March to the 31st of April? Uh, Chairman, I'd like to ask the Tourism Commissioner, Commission and the Administration, why is it the uh, 31st of April, end of April and not the end of March? I mean, nobody asked you to extend the deadline. Why did you require them to submit the, the, the report by the 31st of April? Do you issue such a notice every year? Is it because there have been a lot of coverage about this uh, incident that you issued that uh, letter? No, Chairman, that is not the case. We already received this notice in January this year. And also, uh, we follow section 15 of the agreement, which said that we have to submit all the reports within four months, and we simply acted upon, on the basis of that requirement. Uh, Deputy Commissioner, I think the explanation here is rather straightforward. Uh, oh, uh, the simple answer is that we, 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 uh, we, we made a, a, a you know, careless mistake. In 2012, for all the evaluation report, media report, and auditors' accounts, we always required the organizer to submit them within four months after the completion of the event. And this, for event C4, the, regarding the evaluation report and the media report. I'm sorry, did you hear Mr. Leung's question? Uh, he, he said that you have discretion report only in respect of the evaluation report. Yes, I understand. I just want to point out that we've made a mistake, and the fact is that for the audited accounts, the contract stipulate that they, it would need to be submitted within three months and not four months, and I think that is a clerical error. But then, of course, if this is written in the contract, then it is uh, part of the contract. I have interrupted Mr. Uh, Chen. Mr. Chen Kam Lam, could you now answer Mr. Kenneth Chen's question? May I ask the member to repeat the question again? Now, last year, the auditor's report was signed on the 22nd of February. Uh, my question for the uh, Tourism Commissioner is, uh, when did you, in which year did you start to change this policy? That is, even for the auditor's report, uh, the organizer will only need to submit them by the end of April. In 
after we've extended the operation of the MEF, we started the new arrangement in 2012. So in other words, in 2013, uh, then the report uh, would have to be submitted uh, within four months, right, including the one uh, uh, relating to C3. Yeah, I think that is what it what it is uh, stated in the in the document. I think we may refer to Gen Seven, page twenty seven, the handwritten uh, number uh, twenty seven, uh, twelve point two point eight. Yes. Although you've changed, uh, you've made a change in this agreement, according to twelve point two bracket A. But the audit report, as a matter of fact, was signed on the twenty second of February. But this year is the eighth of May. There's a difference of more than two months. What was there many, may, any particular reason for that uh, discrepancy? There is no major problem at all, except that I have to collect all the invoices and bills before I could uh, submit them to uh, forward them to our auditor for the audit, and and then and then they will finish the audit report, and after we look at the report, we will submit them to the MBF. We have no reason as to why <coughs> it was late. It's just that the invoices came late, and we're not able to uh, you know forward them to the auditor earlier. So this is a question for the administration. I understand that in the funding agreement there is a clause, and if members can refer to the funding agreement, and that would be Gen 8, page 26 of Gen 8, item 11, which is called Project Account. Uh, I think I, I think it's the bank account, and 11.1 said that the applicant would need to open a uh, Hong Kong dollar account, bank account to <clears throat> to receive the the funds. Now, let's say if, uh, if we're talking about for C1 and C4, for the four consecutive years, you will need to uh, open a new account to receive the funding, or could could the organizer use the same account? Deputy Commissioner. Well, we would, if it is the same mega event, and if the and the organizer could use the same account in the following year, so long as all the income and expenditures are related to the mega event. So in that case, it would be very confusing. There might have been some balance left over from last year, and there have been some donations, and then the year of, uh, of uh, uh, during which they will receive were different. Would that create a lot of confusion? Uh, could you, uh, you know, read Section 11 clearly as to whether or not this is how it should be interpreted? Our colleagues will look at the account statements. Uh, of course, this year, the auditor's report. In the auditor's report, there's an amount of fifteen thousand uh, dollars, which were uh, you know left over from the previous year. Uh, the auditor has uh, <coughs> uh, uh, you know uh, verified this in the auditor's report, and this has not happened in, in previous years. Um, as far as the auditor reports, again, um, we can look at Gen Twenty Two. One hundred and ninety-four. Um, in the past, we have um, the standard reports. Um, I will look at C one to C three again. I'd like to focus on page one hundred and ninety-four. Um, I'd like to focus on the auditor's report. There are two important points. Um, first, the uh, the MEF didn't satisfy the um, procedural requirements. First is the issue of bank accounts. First, um, there is a balance of ten thousand seven hundred eighty-one dollars carried forward, and as a result, um, the the cash and cash equivalents did. Um, 
did not match with the balances shown in the bank statement. And the second issue is in, is the procurement procedure. And we should look at the invitation of um, service providers for the mega events fund. And for events C4, um, it did not um, um, follow a fair and um, open um, process in terms of procurement. In Note 5, when we see Note, note 5 of the auditor's report, it's on page 20, page 200. Um, in the bottom left corner and under note 5, three related party transactions are listed, including um, the uh, their connections with associated members. And the first item, the amount is $336,500 and it, the con Connected members, Mr. Tam Ting Pong, and the second, uh, the second sum is three hundred twenty-nine thousand dollars, seven hundred fifty hundred dollars, and the associated members are um, Mr. Haas and Mr. Yu. So, can Mr. Chen Kam Lam explain these trans transaction items? When we applied um, for the fund, we um, disclosed these co committee members in front of the committee and after the event we reported the uh, situation to the auditors and as such st these um, transactions are included in the uh, auditors report so this is a matter of fact according to what mr chen said when you filed your application these related transactions and the related p um, persons were already disclosed to the Mega Events Fund. So after um, receiving the application and understanding the related transactions, what did the MEF do, Deputy Commissioner? For um, the two martial arts clubs by um, Master Ha, And they were not members of um, the committee for event C4. Um, and they were co co organizers. Mr. Ha's company were co, co, co organizers for event C4. And Mr. Tam was also in, in the knowledge. And in their application, these two. Um, Martial arts masters and their respective companies were involved in um, as a co-organizer. As early as um, 2011, during um, event C1, when we um, when the committee assessed the application for this event, our focus was was on whether the organizing companies can come up with um, more than 100. Um, Lion hats um, for the performance, and at that time, a Guinness, um, the organizer, um, attempted to break the Guinness records. We are talking about event C4. We were talking about a world record attempt. So of course, we wanted to we wanted to make the event happen. Otherwise, Hong Kong's reputation might be tarnished. So at that time, when we reached out to the organizers. Um, they they had to guarantee that um, they would have more than 100 um, lion hats on the 1st of January. And these two masters uh, um, are very famous and they can mobilize a lot of um, members and uh, lion hats. And they gave the committee assurance that they were able to meet the targets. And that was the situation in, at that time. And every year thereafter, um, when the organizers um, came to the uh, committee, 
came to the assessment committee, they were also um, they also mentioned that they were co-organizers. So since 2012, uh, we had these related transactions. So my question is, why did the auditors report in 2011 to 13? Um, why weren't these related transactions included in those in the auditor reports in those three years? So uh, I, I'm not trying to doubt the professionalism of the auditors. Um, I'm sh I guess the director of audit might have something to say. Um, the director, please. Where your question, do you have doubts with the auditor's report? Have you read the um, auditor's report for MEF for events C1, C2, and C3? Were there any connected related transactions? They, there were no um, related transactions for C1 to C3, but there were transactions in C4, um, for C4. Um, they were mentioned for the first time today. My um as my my guess is um did you disclose such information because of media pressure? This is my speculation. As Mr. Chen Kam Lam said, um he already explained the issue. Yes, and I've heard his explanation. The application had to um was responsible for disclosing such information and they did that exactly that and the reason for disclosure was that um for the general public if you have a transaction with a related um uh, with related persons the public would be rightly concerned whether the right price is being paid and the Disclosure is only the first step. And well, for for the for the first two items um, of over three hundred dollars um, thousand dollars each, did you judge whether these prices were fair and um, in line with market rates? Um, the disclosure has been made, and but what has the government done? Thank you, Chairman. Very often, different um, government departments and institutions, such as um, the Hong Kong Tourism Board, um, they frequently organize lion dance performances. And in the last few years, we um, we did um, observe the market uh, rates for lions performances. We didn't do any um, formal studies, but we did gather information, and we felt that the prices paid are reasonable. Um, however, that said, the expenditures were not under MEF. You, you answered Mr. Raymond Wong's question this um, earlier today. Um, the funds weren't part of um, weren't under MEF, but you would still um, monitor um, the funds. So, according to the code of good practice. Um, you you should monitor um, some of these items, and can you give an, can you respond? Um, the Hong Kong Tourism Board um, runs a lot of lion dance performances, and a lot of departments also um, need lion dance services. And we would um, see what the what what are the prices they pay. And as the convener of this event. I've been very careful with um, public money, as well as any funds sponsored by um, by uh, parties in the society, in the community. When we um, when we drew up um, price levels for transportation fees, we did refer to the market. Um, if the prices we pay is above the market rate, there might be um, a transfer of interest. But the prices we paid uh, um, were far lower than the market rate, and the 
the prices repaid were only a third or a quarter of the market rate. And the participating organizations um, contributed money as well as effort, and they they didn't um, really care how much um, they, they can get back. However, I feel that we should um, pay a fair compensation for them um, because they contributed people and money. And I think that this um, the prices we paid were reasonable, and these price levels had been in included in our application forms. So there were no um, there there isn't any suspicion of transfer of interest as suggested by Mr. Lang. No, I I never um, had such uh, intents. I have another question. The deputy commissioner said that this item was not funded by MEF, but as many members said, we have to look at the big picture. So let me be more direct or. Um, or um, detailed when we look at Gen twenty one, twenty two. Um, page one hundred ninety six. Um, for first of January two hundred one four event C four, and we have um, expenditure for advertising allowances for dancing teams. Deputy Commissioner, can you point out um, where the funds, where your funds have gone? Can you identify those funds? Uh, can you talk about the the items um, you're responsible for? I, I'll I'll tell you what um, where our funds have gone to. Um, members, please um, refer to Gen 8, um, page 52, in the bottom corner, um, item B, do you refer to Schedule 1, um, it's Schedule 2, it's Schedule 2. Um, for item item B, yes, you don't have to read it read it out. Um, having read that, I don't understand what it uh, what it means. I I understand all all the words, but I I don't understand what this means. Yes, I I never have any doubts. Um, this um expense statement for um event from for event C one to C four, the format has uh, the format has been consistent. If you have to take out certain items um, during, um, have to take out certain items, you you cannot meet the requirements. So the members today are very correct in that we have to look at the big picture. You you have to look at the overall um, picture. So you cannot just um, tackle the, the issue piece by piece, Deputy Commissioner. I don't agree with Mr. Leung's view. Um, in the auditor's report by the co organizer, um, there are different. Um, there are several main items, and we did request the organizers to um, submit some detailed um, sections. And for the uh, advertising fund of eight hundred thirty thousand dollars. Um, not all of that um, advertising fee comes from the fund. The organizer also used um, contributed their own money, and our job is to um, request um, receipts or invoices from the organizer um, in order to make um, to to balance the accounts. Can you show us the the relevant accounts? Uh, uh, let's let her answer this question for the sake of fairness. Can you show us such accounts um, for the, the fee of $820,000? So, so how much of that came from the fund? I need time. Um, let me um, make my final point. 
Chairman, I want to point out that um, this funding system is really is completely inoperable for the uh, fund of eight hundred and thirty two thousand dollars if all if the MEF require um, the presence of receipts they have to produce receipts to the government it's as simple as that but we should this is not the way to go however we have to look at the overall um, monitoring mechanism and we ha in order to assess whether the uh, the entire event is cost effective you um if you say that four hundred thousand dollars of the advertising fee came from the government fund then you have to produce the receipts mr Leung, um they have already answered the question this morning and they they could not um look at these cases one by one they they have to rely on the auditor's report and they have to uh, take look at the funding part but the the point is they they don't even look, they cannot even look at um um assess the funding parts they would um make random checks on certain items um i, I want to raise a question um i want to raise a hypothetical situation um if for the for three million project they would if let's say if they fund half of that one point five million and um this um this is not a valid um, hypothesis because they must produce receipts as a matter of fact mr um Chen Kiam Lam. you're correct after the events all the um receipts of um expansion receipts and bank receipts are there. Um, for our auditors as well as um, for the mega um, mega events fund for funds provided by MEF and other people in the society we would hand over all those receipts to um, the auditors we have receipts for all these Paul please Mr. Paul chair for um, in Jan 22 I did not see any um on site visit reports as um as was the case with the previous um secretariats. Am I understand am I right to understand that uh Gen eight. Gen eight. Okay, I will um, refer to Gen eight. Uh, please get closer to the microphone. If you're not clear about the figures, we've asked um, Kenneth to go through the figures for us. Uh, please help. Uh, Paul, please pull your microphone up. Uh, in relation to Gen 22, we will not deny that the information shown there will be uh, is more than the previous uh, three years. Mr. Chen Kam Lam, right, much more than previous years. What about the Commissioner, the uh, Deputy Commissioner? Deputy Commissioner, Mr. Chen's answer is yes. So, what's your answer? Uh, yes. Why, do, why does it take so long? I was looking for the figures asked by Mr. Leung. Paul, starting from 86 onwards, it's a long list all the way to 123. We did not have such information in previous years. Do you agree, Deputy Commissioner? Agree. 
I want to know how come this time we have a much we have a much more of such information. I think you have to ask the organizer. But you are a controlling unit. In the past three years, you did not ask for such information, and yet you did not uh, query them. And this time, because of the attention it, from the public, you uh, there was there is more information. Is it because you have done more than you should, or is it because you did not do what you're supposed to do in the past? Well, in the past uh, years, <coughs> we base we base our um, assessment and uh, vetting from the information supplied and the audited report. And as to the reason why there is more information supplied, we're not going to speculate. I believe you've all read the document. Let me remind you that. When it comes to previous uh, years, when it comes to the information of uh, participants, is like a blank invoice, uh, a blank sheet. Say Gen Six, page two hundred fifty-one, two five three. All you see is that uh, the organizer um, proved that uh, there is a hundred uh, or. The 253 people or uh, 1,300 1, people are uh, employed. That is the case uh, for previous years. These are blank sheets. Is it because you have the auditor to report? You will, you as a result, will not ask questions. Yes, we take into account these um, in these letters, and we also rely on on-site inspections and the report given to us. Say, for example, the number of lions, dragons, and we also uh, make a calculation of the number of staff members required. And if we have if there is a, going to be a report to the world record, there will be some figures based on observations from different areas supported by documents. We then decide whether it is uh, they are figures we could accept. Of course, we take into account the, um, the, the, the opinion in the audited report that our requirements have been met. Paul? Uh, well, Deputy Commissioner, we've always been saying Commissioner, but it's the Deputy Commissioner. Since when did you have the on-site inspections? Every time. But when it comes to a written re record, uh, we have taken it into a, we have taken on board the views of the uh, um, Corruption Prevention Advisory Committee. A report will be filled in um, after an inspection has been made. Maybe I will go into a bit more detail. In the C1 2010, the answer I got from the document, which document? Gen 5. I think that was, uh, that was a no on-site visit report. It was uh, the later two years and this one is a gen, gen 6 and 7 in uh, page 305 uh, there are some on-site reports maybe we will first look at gen 5 gen 5 there was no such report which page starting from gen 6 is for C2 305 but there is 307 that's the page page 307 
This is the first year that is C2 when there was a note of an on site visit. Page 307 and 309, we see manpower deployed by the organizer for the project. And then there uh, is a list of the number of uh, participants and the items. And then turning the page. Starting from page 311 to 319, we have uh, observation forms. I believe that uh, they are on site uh, records by the uh, MEF or by the Tourism Commission. Is that right, Deputy Commissioner? Uh, you have got your answer. But we did not see your answer. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, let's see the let's look at the observation form three eleven turning the page three twelve there is an overall comment the event has generally achieved the targets and deliverables undertaken by the organizer in the MEF funding agreement. So, in other words, whether the targets have been achieved. And you see it's typed, written, yes. Can you see that? Yes. By the same token, three, four, page 314. 314, the same answer, yes. And then uh, page 316, yes in general. And 318, yes, the event has generally delivered the target. And then uh, page 320, yes. So these observation form briefly stated that targets have been made without any support by figures. Is it a fair comment? From our on-site inspection, of an event, in particular, an event involving tens of thousands of um, spectators and over a thousand performers, I admit that this uh, is based on our observation only. Secretariat sent staff to the events every year, so they have an advantage because they can compare um, this year's observation with how they felt the year before. Yes, I agree that this is, um, uh, this is uh, just down to perception. In page 309, how did you get the conclusion? Get that conclusion. Say, A, in uh, Cheta Road, how many performers <coughs> there were? It says that there are 160, uh, 1,686 dragon. And where did you get the information? I think these are the figures for the reference of the assessment committee. Where did they come from? As I said, when it comes to the number of um, dragon present, lions present, and performance present. We base the information on the information supplied by first the organizer. Uh, on top of that, our observation on site and the information we obtain. Say, for example, uh, they try to break the world record to have uh, uh, 80, 80, 881, 88, more than uh, 88 dragons present. So you can, you could only rely on the report made by the organizers that there there were one thousand six hundred eighty six dragons. We explained that one source of information was from the organizer. On top of that, we had the observation of uh, secretariat staff. We roughly counted the number of dragons and lions, and if it involves a record 
breaking activity, we would uh, rely on the independent auditor who is responsible for re verifying whether the record has been bro has been broken. Mr. Chen, in order to assist members' understanding of the number of lions and dragons, I can tell you that we apply to break the Guinness World Record. And their requirement is very stringent. There are auditors us, uh, with um, different teams. There are more than 50 people to count, and every participant signed. So we could not possibly make up the figure by just saying how many people there were. Say, for example, 2014, our target was 1,000 uh, Buddha. And the auditor on site uh, counted. And the number turned out to be 800 or so. We added more people for the figure to rise to close to 1,000. And they thought that that did not count because they only count, they only counted the time when they were recording the record. And that would be final. So auditors ask people to do a head count. And that is the same for dragons and lions. The first time when we had, uh, when we broke the record, and we had 1,111 um, lions. But the auditor said that uh, the record we apply for was to have 1,111 lions. So even if we uh, had 1,150 lions, that would not count. Mr. Jeffrey Lamb, this is about breaking the Guinness World Record. So uh, there were accountants doing a head count, announcing the and announcing the figure. You will be able to verify that from TVB clips. I did. I do not intend to challenge your figures. It's just that when it comes to the controlling unit, that is the Secretariat of the MEF and the Tourism Commission, apart from relying on the organizer and the independent auditor's report. Well, this year is different because uh, this year there were two m staff members from the Audit Commission to do the field work. In previous years, there was no accurate record when it comes to the figures in the actual event. Am I right to say that, Deputy Commissioner? Sorry, speakers off mic. Well, if we were, if we are to break a record, and if there are independent um, bodies there, we would ask, we would ask for the information in the on-site uh, headcount. Say, for example, Gen Seven for twenty um, thirteen, page forty-five is uh, uh, page five hundred forty-five. Is uh, manpower deployed? The first one is uh, manpower seen on site. You said there is a uh, two hundred and one hundred uh, performers and supporting staff. So seen on site by whom? Uh, we have about uh, three or five uh, pers uh, people at different locations. So. Well, I read out the observation form, and it seems that uh, there was n none stating that there are a certain number of people seen on site. Uh, did you use a counter? Did you use calculator? What information did you use? Well, we uh, count number of people in uh in a in a in a square and then 
how many squares there are. Yes, it's difficult for us to actually count how many people uh, there actually are because it's an open area w with a lot of people. Uh, yes, of course, it's just like the uh, June 4th uh, vig uh, vigil. The organizers' figure is very different from that of the police. But when it comes to the KPI, the key performance indicators, it, state, it stated the indicators. And I, we see that uh, in some other events, there is a there is a lower uh, turnout. Say, for example, Mr. Cole's event, that there were less people, and as a result, there there is a a, san a sanction, say twenty percent. I think it's different because the other one uh, is a charging event. We have this pile of. Um, uh, stops ticket stops as a record, but as we explain to the audit commission, if it is an event or a venue that is uh, that involves a confined space with tickets, it's easier for us to count the number of people. However, if it is an open area with uh, no ticket admission and the area covers a few streets. There are only three staff members who could actually do an on-site inspection. And on top of that, we deploy three or four people to help. But it's impossible <coughs> for us to get a, an accurate headcount if you don't have the ability to do so. And when it comes to events with, without emission tickets, should you not have included number of um, people uh, turning up as one of the KPIs. We hoped, we hoped that the independent auditor's report would be able to help us because uh, the figures would be verified by professionals. Uh, we would consider Mr. Jay's suggestion. Well, um, we would consider whether some KPIs uh, would be difficult to verify and whether there should be any adjustments. Your so-called independent auditor's report, what is meant by independent? How do you make sure that it is truly independent? In the agreement, there is a requirement that, uh, let me find the relevant paragraph because I don't want to make a mistake. Uh, we can help you. Uh, if it's uh, the so-called independent auditor itself is one of the persons in charge in the organizing com organ in the organizer, would it be independent per se? When I think an independent professional is an independent professional. Uh, I think there is a special <coughs> term in the agreement. That's why I was trying to find it. Earlier, Mr. Raymond Wong asked uh, about uh, Southeast Asia and KPI, where you um, fell short. You should be very honest. If it's put in the agreement, we will have to mull over every single word. You should not give us give people the impression that you are just um, uh, making up the figures. For the MEF, we have a basic requirement that there need to be at least an event participated by at least ten thousand people to yeah, to evaluate whether they have delivered the homework. Number of participants is one of the criteria. A better approach, of course, there, there is of course a better approach if we indeed require the applicants to engage an independent company to help help it uh, uh, you know make an assessment of the number of participants actually this can be done but then an, an additional amount would need to be spent i but we certainly would consider the the, the uh, suggestion made by the committee going forward paul we understand that over the years uh, 
the the independent auditor is the Wong Long Tech and Co. Uh, I don't think there's any objection to that. I think that is not the case for 2014. It's the same auditor. If we look at Gen 6229, if you look at the uh, the section about uh, accountant, independent auditors. Will you please uh, go to that page first? If I'm wrong, Mr. Chen Kam Lang can correct me. Mr. Patrick Wong, CPA Limited, is one of the participants. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, one of the organizers. He's not one of the organizers, he is our consultant. Uh, no, he, he doesn't charge for his service. So his role as a consultant was the only uh, it was his only responsibility to submit the auditor's report. Not only to uh, did he have to uh, uh, prepare the auditor's report. When we applied to <coughs> break the uh, Guinness record, he did a lot of coordinating coordinating work. So he would need to prepare a budget, and he was involved in uh, in preparing the figures. No, he was not involved in the preparation of the budget. No, he was not involved. So what role did he play? His main role is to help us uh, apply for the <coughs> uh, breaking of the Guinness uh, World Record and also uh, being our auditor. Bob? Well, under the circumstances, the controlling officer and the uh, and the M and the tourism commissioner. Would you, can you, can you accept the independent auditor's report? Well, this is an independent auditor registered in Hong Kong. Obviously, we would accept the uh, auditor's report that he has submitted, if it is in compliance with the <coughs> uh, standard laid down by the accounting profession. I understand that when we look at page 229 just now, it is stipulated here that uh, for example, the responsibility of the committee, if we refer to that section, it says here that the government requests the committee to keep proper. Jing Wei Yu Wei, we will not hold all the jobs or something. This is in theory. Well, this is actually common sense. Uh, the auditor would need to uh, check all the invoices before uh, the actual payment is made. Uh, the auditor would need to check all the invoices before the audit is complete. And it, but it's not the first time that we've read, that we've looked at these so-called single sheet invoices, and I don't know whether or not they satisfy the accounting uh, criteria. Or do you think that those invoices uh, can satisfy the auditor or or the so-called independent auditor, and then you will not query uh, them any further, Chairman? I must stipulate clearly. I must clarify that the report was prepared according to the standards laid down by the relevant professional body. This morning we've said several times that uh, on such matters we have to rely on the work that performed by the professional. At the beginning I said that the report for this year, and I'm referring to Gen 22, the content is much more substantial, including for example, information regarding the participants. So, do you think is it the case that for this year uh, they've done what they've done is really unnecessary and redundant? That is compared with the three previous years, Commissioner, Chairman. I think we will welcome as much uh, information as possible. The more information, the better. As to what would, uh, how much information would be uh, appropriate. We have relied on the judgment of the professional. Of course, the commissioner would say that you don't have an accounting, an auditing team, but the government is the government. So, in theory, if you don't have sufficient manpower or professional support, you should say so. The question is that over the last three years, we were very satisfied 
uh, that uh, they only submitted, you know, uh, you know, blank invoices, and you still pay them accordingly, and you even, you know, made it one of your KPIs. But this year, because of the all the commission's report and some media report, everything seems to have changed. So I'd like to know what has happened. Is it because in the past you always felt that you know it's not really the necessary, but except that this year you need to really uh, follow the, the rules stringently? Uh, Permanent Secretary, that is uh, of the $1.5 million that you uh, uh, allocated. I understand, but th today we've said many times that we've not just looked at the items that we've funded. We would basically require an auditor's report. We expect the independent auditor to give us his opinion and in before giving the opinion he should do what as an auditor he should have, he should have done. Regarding the new items our audit would be more stringent. Our inspection would be more stringent. So as to as for the as to why uh, is <coughs> whether or not it's because of media concern that we are asking for more information this year. I'd like to remind members that in the evaluation report submitted this time, uh, that is the report submitted by the applicant. He ha himself have, had actually listed the areas where they have not satisfied the targets. And again, uh, uh, the auditor has pointed out that the, the actual figures fall below <coughs> uh, uh, the, the, the requirements are stipulated in the, in the KPI. In previous years, those KPIs have been met as confirmed by auditors while we're on the same subject. For the last three years, the so-called meeting the, the KPI, first of all, uh, you, you, you base a conclusion on, uh, you, know, uh, you know, the so-called uh, blank invoices and you, don't, you do not check the numbers stringently. And this time, you've you used a magnifying glass. As a result, uh, you need to, you know, you know amend and, and adjust the figures and, uh, and the numbers. And if I look at the figures relating to the number of performers and performing teams, the number of more than 10 million suddenly dropped to 1.32 million. Uh, if I may be more specific, over the last four years, allowance for dancing teams were respectively for year year one. 25 million, 8.3, 14 million in the year four, and 7.3 million this year. Oh, sorry, 337.332 million. Uh, but w year one, 1 1.5, uh, year, year two, year two, 82, sorry, uh, 1.43 million for year three, and it's 0.732 million this year. The so called promotion cost suddenly uh, uh, jumped from 300,000 to more than 710,000. The figures give the impression that uh, this year is particularly different. So what, what really has happened? Is it because in the past you've not done uh, the part that you should have done? And is it that only this year that you are really, you know, <clears throat> uh, you know uh, uh, taking it seriously? The organizer had explained that uh, for this year, the number of performers and those who are paid uh, were smaller than what they had projected, and they've given an explanation. Perhaps the organizer, well, uh, perhaps we should ask the organizer to explain first. Chairman, actually, my question is that in the past, uh, there was no third party, uh, there was no monitoring by the media and a third party. You were more re willing to accept uh, what their reports, and but this year, because of the uh, audit commission's report and the media uh, watching over you, uh, the, then all of a sudden the figures have suddenly become more accurate. So I'd like to know what has happened. Permanent Secretary, I think that is a big allegation. One of the observations in the Audit Commission's report is that we very often, uh, you know, make deductions uh, uh, from the uh, funding that we've uh, given to the organizer. That is, if they fail to deliver, we would uh, uh, make deductions. 
the Secretariat and also myself as the controlling officer. For any event, after we've looked at all the reports submitted and the auditor's report, if we found that uh, they have not satisfied their targets, then we would make deductions. The question is whether or not they've met the KPIs. The question is that uh, previously, without the help of the Audit Commission to help you look at the figures, uh, the organizer could easily meet the targets. But this year, the Audit Commission to help you look at the figures clearly, and, and all of a sudden, you know, uh, the organizer failed to meet the targets, and then you, and then you have to make deductions. So, uh, is it a right conclusion that you can only do a work uh, going forward every year uh, with the help of the Audit Commission? I think it's not. I think other than these four events, in the past there have been other events that we've actually made deductions of from the funding because the number of participants fell uh, below the 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 the, the, the uh, projected number. Uh, just now, Mr. Chair uh, mentioned several times about blank invoices. I'm afraid that the public may have the misunderstanding that our invoices on our expenses were all fake. In fact, all our expenses, even if they were not items uh, subvented by the MGF, we do have uh, 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 parties, you know, receiving the payment and acknowledging receipt of such payment. Uh, we do have the invoices. If necessary, we are willing to uh, supply, uh, submit those uh, invoices. And also, uh, Mr. Porcher was being very meticulous. He had looked at, yeah, our, the, our figures for, the, for all those four years, our expenses for those four, four years. I must explain that for those four events, uh, they were all different in nature. In year one, we had uh, 1,111 dragons. That was the theme. So the expenses for year one was different from those of for year two. In year two, we have uh, 200, uh, you know, uh, uh, maskers. This is different again, again uh, uh, for year four. So we simply reported the actual amount that had actually been incurred or spent. So in controlling our expenses, we have been very, very tight. So the expenses vary. You can you can see the expenses vary from year to year, which reflected what actually transpired. Okay, uh, well, my time is up. Okay. I'll defer to, to Alan now. Alan to be followed by Kenneth. I, I'm, I, I'm okay so far. Alan, <laughs> Chairman, one of our concerns is that when Mr. Chen Kam Lam, being the convener, uh, made the application, let me first uh, uh, refer to C4. The application form, uh, and if you want the reference, we can look at Gen 8, page 63. Uh, that is the projected number of jobs to be created. Uh, the number is uh, uh, 3,000. And subsequently, when we look at the figures uh, reported, it's 1,850. Obviously, there's a shortfall of more than a thousand persons. Originally, Mr. Chen Kam Lam, as the convener, said that some were some of the performers were paid performers, and then the audit commission uh, found out, if, after looking at the figures carefully, that at least 410 were actually recruited from primary schools and kindergartens. Originally, Mr. Chen Kam Lam said that they were paid allowances on the rarium, and then a few headmasters uh, came forward and said they did not receive such payment. The deputy convener, Mr. Hak Tak Kin, even issued a statement saying that he had not been paid, he had not received any payment. Does this point prove that the whole event is really very, very is is, is a mess. Uh, or you should have, you know, fill in the application, and based on the application form, you sign the agreement. And when the event is over, then you should know whether or not you have actually delivered the three thousand per people. Uh, if not, you 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 say you don't one thousand eight hundred fifty. At least you should you should make 
a report because it involved the payment. Why are the figures so confusing? Why it suddenly changed from three thousand to one thousand eight hundred fifty, and then you say they were paid on an RM subsequently? It was proved that that was not the case. The headmaster said they had uh, the student had not been paid. Uh, could you explain this point in order to, to to you know, clarify our, our thoughts? Perhaps. So would it be the case? Would it be the case that the organizer and the tourism? Uh, you, you did not, you know, you know, Philip, you know, put in the application properly, and the commission uh, simply, you know, uh, you know, handled the application casually, Mr. Chinkam Lam. I like to thank Mr. Lam for the question. I've been waiting for the opportunity to explain this for a long time. Many people have the misunderstanding, like Mr. Long, that this uh, uh, this uh, uh, item. Of expenditure was uh, rather uh, uh, con confusing. Actually, we put in the application based on our projection. After we have submitted the application, the MBF would then put our application proposal, uh, put our application into the agreement. And a crucial point here, Chairman, is that this time, that is for 2014. We apply to the MEF for a subsidy of two point seven odd million dollars. In the end, the MEF approve a, a funding of one point five million. Chairman, if you look at the whole event, if an important part of the event, if the uh, funding has been cut by forty percent, then for the entire event. What will probably what would happen probably happen is that we have to adjust the overall expenditure structure of expenditure. Of course, we tried our best to look for other sponsors from uh, uh, from the community, and we hope we will be able to, to to meet the target. And that's the first thing we needed to do. And secondly, the three thousand uh, paid jobs referred to just now. I must say that in the whole process, we conduct, we adopted a different method of calculation uh, compared with previous years. That is, at a very late stage, we thought that the theme for the event this time was uh, 1,000 uh, laughing Buddhas. So we could therefore cut down on the number of lions. Uh, we cut it down from 500 to 300. So there was a sh a drop of 200 lines. As a result, we, with the number of people high, was cut by six to 700. Therefore, at the end, the number of participants that we have was 1,800. Uh, that's the figure that we uh, verify. Over the, in previous years, we would uh, base our calculation on the number of lions and dragons. The 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 the, 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 the one thousand three hundred and seventy six that's the the, the number of uh, paid jobs uh, uh, created and also regarding the payment for the kindergartens we have uh, uh, verified with the two co-organizers that they have not paid uh, such uh, make such payments to the schools or the non professional organizations and that is very clear. But I hope the members um, can understand the uh, ap the application process. Um, the we we are very stringent. Um, I noticed for the um, application for event C C for the uh, dragon and lion dance um, extravaganza in the application form. Um, let's look at Gen 8. Um, the application date was um, eighth of March. Is that right? It it was in March. It was on the eighth of March. It's listed on page 84. 
is, is there a mistake here on the document? On page 84, in the bottom left corner, um, this should be a mistake. It should be the application date should be the the eighth of March, twenty thirteen, in the cell of twenty twelve. The correct date should be twenty thirteen. Can Mr. Chen confirm that the application date was the eighth of March, twenty thirteen? Um, the number of um, lion heads. When 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 did those acquisitions or procurement occur? Um, the purchases were made in um, in at the end of December. When was the funding of 1.5 million approved? That happened earlier. According to our papers, the application date was the eighth of March, twenty thirteen, and the the contract was signed on the th on the sixth of um, November, twenty thirteen, and the event took place on the third of January this year. According to what Mr. Chen said, um, in December, twenty thirteen, a decision was made um, to um, to reduce the scope of the event. I have a question for the deputy commissioner. Um, the original um, application involves um, 3,000 um, um, lions, and at the end, the, uh, the the actual number was 1,800. Um, after um, receiving the accounts um, from the organizer, we have um, put forward the recommendations to um, the assessment committee of MEF. Um, let, you can look at Gen 22, um, page 202, on the bottom right corner. That's the final page of the document. You can see that the assessment committee's um, suggestions were taken, and for event C4, the scope has changed, and the number of participating people and um, has also changed, and the number of jobs created was stipulated. Bef before the change, no application was made to inform the assessment committee. So, with regards to event C4, and we we decided to deduct seven percent of the fund as a financial sanction on the project. Um, if certain targets have not been made and no application for amendment has been made to the assessment committee. We would impose a financial sanction. Financial sanction is one thing. But for the original application, the assessment committee um, knew that 3,000 participants were expected. So even after the 7% sanction, they still could not uh, meet the target. Even imposing a 7% sanction could not address the public's concerns. I, I could have said that um, I'm expecting 30,000 people, and at the end I only have 300 people, and I still obtain substantial funds. Um, we already um, asked Mr. Ko on the issue of amendments to the contracts. If there are amendments, um, they must be um, explained to MEF, and this is stipulated in the contract. So perhaps this can uh, answer your your queries. We do have um, approval criteria for mega events. First of all, we must 
um, we would decide whether or not it is a valid mega event, even if certain criteria are not met. For event C4, um, several, um, um, a large number of people have um, um, have been attracted um, to attend, and I'm talking about the event on the first of January. Overall speaking, it um, it uh, the event achieved the status of a mega event, even if certain criteria were not met. Um, we would. Um, tackle the issue by means of a financial sanction, the 7% sanction. However, if the entire event is called off, then we would certainly um, tackle it in a different manner. If I tell the MEF that I will create 30,000 jobs and at the end I only, um, I've only created 300 jobs and, and then <coughs> a financial sanction is imposed. So, what what does that um, what does that mean? Um, is that how you work? You grant the contract based on the application, and the contract stated very clearly that I'm sure you you know the contracts inside out, and it's very clear according to the contracts that in case of any amendments. In the information, the applicant must inform MEF, and the MEF must immediately respond. And they should not take um, post-event actions such as finan financial sanctions. This is not how you you should um, carry this out. Um, the purpose is to um, organize mega events. If these mega events are not materialized, of course, we would. Um, do something else. The MEF has different assessment criteria. There are different aspects, um, recruitment, branding, etc. You would as you would assign scores, right? Each criterion. Um, merits 20 points or 30 points. In this case, if the uh, number of jobs created fail to meet the, meet the target, according to our assessment criteria, economic benefits um, include different areas, and one of that is the number of jobs created. Um, as a controlling body, we would assess all these criteria. We would assess whether only one criterion is not met or multiple criteria are not being met. So these are the considerations of the assessment committee. If um, during the application process, we would carefully vet um, the applications, and we would assess whether the uh, the targets um, mentioned are reasonable. We would assess whether the proposed targets are viable and um, reasonable. You haven't answered Mr. Leung's question. If the applicant um, gives a very optimistic target, and uh, and uh, they uh, and if the applicant doesn't inform you of the changes, um, if they are granted a big fund because of very lofty targets, what would you do? When we um, consider any application, as I mentioned, we would assess whether the four basic principles. And the five um, ass assessment criteria are met. If those are fulfilled, if you f if we feel they can fulfill those criteria, then they would the application would be granted. The most important um, point is we will assess whether the mega event can be materialized. In this case, this mega event. 
um, has fulfilled um, the, what it sets out to do. But are we going to grant a full fund? Um, we would look at, we will see whether they can fulfill all the requirements or criteria laid out. Um, last last year they did inform us of the changes, but this year they did not. And we, and as such, we would um, study the sanctions um, that are suitable, and we would um, consider the uh, the the weight of the financial sanction. So first of all, we would see whether um, the the event itself is materialized, and for other criteria. We would discuss with the committee before coming up with a decision. Um, let, let's um, allow Mr. Chan to continue. When I first came here um, to testify, um, I talked about the issue of jobs. Um, this is um, the number of jobs created is not a main criterion of the ass assessment committee. From day one, our focus is on organizing a mega event. So the number of paid jobs created, um, we we had no attention to um, um, to set a lofty target because it wouldn't help us um, secure a bigger fund. So this has nothing to do with our application. So we we only estimated the number of lions and dragons required and came up with a figure. If at the end. Of, at the end of the day, we would um, look at the number of paid people, number of people who receive transportation allowances, um, and we would report those figures to um, MEF. We have no incentive to um, um, to overestimate the figures in order to secure bigger funding. So this is one point we must clarify. This is, but this has been written uh, down uh, in the KPIs. I, I completely agree. Um, this, uh, this information is listed out in the on the application form, and uh, these were then transferred to the contracts. And the uh, figure um, stated in the application and the final figure approved might have a big discrepancy. We cannot anticipate such changes. We can only um, wait until the event actually happens before we can declare any um, changes to MEF. We have no reason or incentive to um, hide any um, information. Non-disclosure might only mean that um, you, you have failed to um, Hide such information. In um, on the first of January two o one four, we have staff from the audit commission um, doing the balloting. If this event is not part of um, um, the, uh, um, a, a, if we are not auditing this case, you wouldn't have such information in previous years. Um, no one was there to vet the figures you gave. Um, the audit commission um, was there to vet the 2014 events, uh, and that's why you gave such detailed information, including the full names of everyone. But in the past years, you only have a signature, a very simple signature. So our concern is that in the past three years, we are worried that public money might have been wasted. So um, for the Tourism of Commission as a controlling body, they have been um, they have been too lazy in the last three years. But this year, they've suddenly um, been forced to do more. The figure we gave each time um, was in line with the reality. In the past three, in the past few years, all the organizing bodies, 
told us in very detail um, the number of lions and dragons they um, they provided and the number of participating people and we showed all these figures to MEF and those are based on facts. If you read the reports from the past three years, there was a name list, but we have a name list this year. So is there a special reason for this change? Chairman, as I mentioned, all these paid jobs weren't um, direct recruitment from outside. According to the auditor's report, um, the employment records, salary records, um, I think this is being unfair to us, to, to this event. We cannot possibly um, ask those um, masters to provide the employment or salaries records of all their employees because we never directly recruited anyone. But if I told the audit commission that we have, um, there are no paid jobs um, derived from this event, this is un unrealistic. So you don't, you haven't um, understood the operation of our events. Mr. Chen in 2014, you have this name list. You have a list of who, um, who were paid for this event. If you promise that for events C1, C2, and C3, you, you can provide similar name lists and you can solve our concerns. I have to go back and ask the masters. This year we've been very um, prudent and careful. I understand that the director of audit um, came to us this year and I feel we have to provide more information to MEF in order for them to better understand the operation of our events. In the past, even even though we weren't um, asked to do so, we we had asked um, the masters to provide the information in detail. Ellen, our concern is that um, the contract has been signed, but the provisions have not been enforced. Um, both the MEF applicant and Tr um, Tourism Commission. It's, it seems that they are very, um, they have, they are not very serious with the contracts, and and they have um, virtually ignored the KPIs and different provisions. My question is, well, Mr. Chen Kam Lam, you th you. Uh, think that this is very unfair to you because uh, there was no way to f for you to find out who w who the performers uh, would be. Then why did you sign the agreement in the first place? These are two consenting parties. Did you make any suggestions that you wanted to change the um, condition of the terms of the agreement? Well, I have to make it very clear to you all that under the agreement, we. Uh, all the requirements have been met in the past four years. Every time when we gave a report to the MEF, we got all the funding, 100% of it. And the event we organized was very well received. So I think that your questions are too harsh and unfair to us. No, but it's illogical. If you th if you say that they're too harsh and they are unachievable, then yes. Well, but we fulfill them all. Then then that is not too harsh. I'm not going to get bogged down on it, on this. You have yet to answer my earlier question. That is, at the beginning you said, well, there were so many uh, 
paid performers, and then some people came out to say that there was uh, no salary on the COVID convener, Ha uh, Dukkin, said that, well, there was none, and there was even a, a declaration or a statement made to the media. Well, there was a drop from 3,000 to 1,800, and then a further drop to 1,300. Please explain. Well, we drop five. We drop from five hundred lions to three hundred lions, and the uh, two hundred lions would cost us six hundred to seven hundred people. And in our estimate, out of one thousand Buddha, well, originally we planned for one thousand, but at the time when we planned for this, we did not know how many students that there would be. And afterwards, when we had the figure of the students, we have to we had to deduct that from the figure. They we're talking about several hundred. So the six or seven hundred plus the several hundred here, we are talking about over a thousand. But you downsized it from three thousand to one thousand eight hundred uh, um, eight hundred fifty, and then you uh, took out the students. As a result, there were one thousand three hundred. Yes. Then how come uh, Ha Dukkin had to issue a, dec a statement to the media uh, to co correct? He was he was the co convener. I think that was uh, to clarify uh, the misunderstanding. The figures we gave tally. Well, we have evidence to see whether they tallied or not. You said that it wasn't you who uh, went to find the performers, and one of the things pointed out in the audit's uh, report was that there was conflict of interest. Chinese version, uh, page thirty-seven, bracket C. It says that in uh, twenty eleven, twelve, and thirteen, the majority of the service was procured from the two related uh, parties upon payment of uh, 1.5 million, 1 million and 1.4 million dollars. And none of these figures were supported by invoice, quotation or uh, employment records. So this is another unclear account, a mess. Chen Kam Lam, you are the uh, Convener, what's your explanation? Well, in this case, well, this is a large, a large scale um, event. It's different from events involving just a hundred or fifty uh, lions. We're talking about one thousand one hundred and eleven uh, lions, and it <laughs> takes all the lions available in Hong Kong. It's impossible for us to get a quotation. And we need perfect coordination before the event could be successful. And these are these bodies or organizations will have to um, ask for a lower than market rate before the event could be successful. So it's impossible for us to get a quotation. It's different from procuring the service uh, from the market because we're not talking about the service providers. They are participants. The amount received as stated in the audit report, was not pocketed by themselves. They had to be dis, uh, given out to other participating um, bodies. So these sums were not pocketed by them all. You said that it's, it's difficult to to do it, but it doesn't mean that the assessment committee was not supposed to know that the majority of the 
funding amount should, would go to two related parties. Well, even if they were willing to do, a, do you a favor to jump through uh, a hoop for you, it didn't mean that. Um, it mean it didn't mean that. Uh, it doesn't mean that you could uh, say what you said. You, I now give you another opportunity to explain. Well, as I explained, that um, these participants were not engaged by us directly, so that could. It could be impossible for us uh, to uh, have employment record. So, can, can the administration answer my question in uh, four point one four C? Whether is paid for you directly, and even if you are not responsible for paying it directly, you. Um, were still responsible for the for the sums. I'd like to hear from Mr. Jeffrey Lamb, the chairman of the assessment committee. Would you also like to know that the that forty to fifty percent of the funding amount went to two related parties? Please rephrase your uh, question. And it's not given under the MEF. Please rephrase your question. I think uh, is uh, it should be along the line of responsibility that they they are responsible for overseeing the entire thing. So for Mr. Lamb, the chairman, uh, was this a re relevant information? That should be made known to the assessment committee. Uh, please answer. You mean about in relation to the number of people? No. On page 47, 4.14c, it says that uh, for the three events C1 to C3, the majority of the services, including the recruitment of performers, were procured from two associates of the organizer. Which together had been paid one point five million, one million, and one point four million, representing forty eight percent, thirty six percent, and forty four percent of the total expenditure incurred. Is this relevant information that should have been made known to the assessment committee when we received the report? We would uh, have a discussion. In the end, there would be an audited account, and according to the audited auditor's report, we made our decision. Like this time, we decided to reduce the funding amount in relation to the content of the audit report. Perhaps answer the question. Answer Mr. Lang's question, which is very clear. We're talking about two associates of the organizer, Mr. Ha and Mr. Tam. They obtained over a million dollars in events C1 to C4. Should the assessment uh, committee no, no, uh, know about it. Should I have been informed about this? Yes or no? Perhaps I will let the administration to answer. And you refer to four one four C. P.S. On the application form, as we've covered today, for C one to C four. As we explained, when the applicant supplied the information on the application form and to the assessment committee, they uh, said that uh, they, well, the, these two masters co-hosted the event. So the assessment committee knew that 
these are the co um, co organizers in making arrangements for the lions and dragons, and in the information supplied to the assessment committee, the estimate of uh, transportation fees given to given for these uh, lions and uh, dragons were also stated although the the, the sums would not come from the MEF and we and as to the uh, expenses and the sums required for 1111 uh, lions it would the arrangements would be made through the two masters and the assessment committee knew about it so i well i take your word for it i would like to ask mr wong the ps to tell us where can you find the information the c2 no i'm looking at c4 c4 in gen 8 if you need assistance, it's uh, from page 58 onwards, or 59 onwards. And you will find the uh, two names on page 67. Please refer to 107. You're talking about Gen 8. Yes, uh, Gen 8. Gen 8, page 107. My understanding was that this was um, copy, yeah. a copy of the information supplied, and we see the uh, organizer, main organizer, co-organizers, and you see the two associations. And of course, it says the conveners. Um, Chen Kam Lam and the co conveners uh, were these uh, two masters which were related to the co organizers. And this is a presentation given to the assessment um, committee. Anything else? If you're talking about the sums in the budget, in the application form, you will, f you will find. You will find it where page seventy. And there is transportation uh, expenditure. So one point three three one point three three five two million dollars. So where does it say that it would go to uh, Masters Tam and Ha? No, my un our understanding is that they would not go into the, their pockets. Okay, I will be very clear with you. Where do we see that? The sum will be distributed to the uh, recipients through Masters Ha and Tam. Our understanding is that uh, the arrange uh, arrangements will be made by these two masters when it comes to um, lions and dragons. From where did you see it? I will defer to the chairman. Well, actually, you you're answering on behalf of the chairman. But of course, if you uh, Jump out to answer. I will not stop you. Just now, the PS said that on the application form, yes, is set out. And in our discussion, we heard about the two coal conveners. That's how they're named. We heard from them how they would assist in the organization of the event and how they would provide a sufficient number of uh, dragons, uh, lions, uh, Buddhas, and uh, Chinese unicorns. When it comes to the lions, dragons, props, the um, participants, they are all very and the performance, they're all very important. They said they would apply to break uh, Guinness World Record. So they explained to us to us then and then 
all these uh, matters. And in the discussion, our understanding was that the two co-conveners, Master Tam and Master Ha, and the relevant associations would provide certain services. I would like to ask the uh, Audit Commissioner, when you compile paragraph C on page 47, did you hear from Mr. Jeffrey Lamb, the chairman of the assessment committee, about these uh, supplementary information? Because what he was talking about, that these are all verbal. That's why they did not appear in writing. And verbally, the explanations were given that uh, to the effect that the Masters Ha and Tam would um, assist in uh, uh, um, getting performers and when salaries were paid, it would be paid through them to the performers. If this explanation had been given to the audit commissioner, I would think that um, this paragraph would not have been written in this way. Commissioner, our audit was done through a liaison mainly with the Tourism Commission. In relation to C1s to C4, our understanding was that Part of the sum would go to the performers, and as to what uh, financial arrangements uh, there were, whether there would be a conflict of interest or related party transactions, we did not see any information on that. Uh, so, and when they read our draft, that they did not object to our uh, to our draft to our draft report. I want to ask the tourism commissioner. Prior to today, did you hear about what Mr. Jeffrey Lamb said? That is the verbal explanation, yes or no, Commissioner. Deputy Commissioner, maybe. The understanding of the uh, chairman of the assessment com committee, I uh, I was aware of that, and I had the same understanding. When there was well, during the meeting with the tourism commission um, and the audit commission, I explained that for such kind of um, performers, it's a limited market with a limited number of uh, suppliers. If we are t if we were to ensure the surface quality, if we had the participation of um, a unit or two that could guarantee quality, it, uh, would, uh, it would ensure success. And of course, uh, we accept that whatever recommendation we receive from the audit, it would be about the way forward. And we have had a discussion with the Audit Commission. Bon, bon, uh, perhaps I can help here. In Gen 8, I'm sorry, let me, uh, I'm looking at, I'm going to Gen 8. They had a meeting on the uh, 10th of May. Which, which page are you looking at? 123. And this is only an extract of that meeting. I don't know whether or not uh, we have a detailed set of minutes for that is, having heard the presentation, and then you had a meeting, right? Chairman, we do not have a more detailed set of minutes. Well, this extract, this is called extract because in, at that meeting, we did not just discuss this item. So we've therefore extracted the, 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 the record for this item for the Audit Commission. Chairman, I find this rather strange. Uh, I think the findings of the Audit Commission is that 
the funding for C1C2 to C3, 40 to 50 percent of the funding is involved. If you have such a verbal explanation and it's not in the minutes, it would mean that you've not done your job properly. As a mon as regulator, I mean, if you don't put it down in the or on record, how would we know where the money has been has gone? Uh, these, so you're, you're telling us that the, these two pages are the only record. Of course, uh, if that's the case, we can come to our conclusion. And uh, it's the first time that I hear uh, from Mr. Jeffrey Lamb that in the uh, there was a, a verbal uh, explanation uh, about the role of Mr. Ha and Mr. Tam. So so. Uh, chairman, I also want to clarify one more point. Mr. Leung, uh, the figure referred to Mr. Leung is wrong. It's not 40 to 50 percent. That that figure is wrong. What is it then? Now, all right, I'll read it out more accurately. For C1 is 48 percent, C2 36 percent, C3 44 percent. Is that accurate enough? Well, the subsidy from the MEF and the total sum are two separate amounts. We're not talking about 48% of the total amount. I think both of you are correct. The director of audit, uh, you know, used the total expenditure as the basis. Mr. Leung well, well, was, in, in, in your case, you did not you know, you know, sponsor this. The audit <coughs> commission look at the whole event, giving us the impression that it's forty percent. But the megaphone did not, you know, subsidize these events, right? So I think we must clarify this point when we draft the report. But anyway, when you approve this amount of funding. Uh, you, you you approve 1.5 million, right? Right. So. So. We're we're talking about the figure for the whole mega event. Understand, but for the other among, how it has been spent, where. Uh, has it gone to that would uh, in, that would affect your 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 your, your, your decision your final decision, Mr. Chingam Lam. Would you like to respond because the question is not directed to you. Although is it, 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 the, though the question is not directed to me, but the I think I'm also involved uh, as far as this event is concerned. So I must clarify, Chairman, you. Uh, refer to the figures in the Audit Commission's report. They do not represent the funding given to us by the government. That definitely is not the amount of money. Uh, these are actually money uh, from sponsorship from people in the community. And this percentage is only about the percentage of the expenditure. Another point i like to make is that in the audit report, what is mentioned in the audit report, I think the director of order, you did not directly try to, uh, you know, obtain an understanding from ourselves. You obtained information through other departments in the Tourism Commission, and I can say this to you that all our ex expenditures were supported by quotations. Regarding expenses on the Dragon and Line dances, in the course of our preparation, we immediately now. In 4.1.C, it said nothing, is, there's no record at all. I think that is not true. I must clarify that this is not true. Uh, director, well, it's not too late. Chairman, okay. Okay, let, let's do it, you know, uh, in turn. I'll ask the Deputy uh, Director to answer the question. Thank you. So far, from the, according to the record of the Tourism Commission, say for example, uh, Mr. Master Ha, the sub 
supporting evidence is only a summary plus a series of uh, receipts, but we have not really seen quotations, invoices, uh, employment record of staff, and records of uh, wages paid. That is, the, the, the acknowledgement of pay, wage payment by all the performers. Our colleagues have made inquiries with the Tourism Commission, and we've asked them to uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, make inquiries, the organisers. We've asked this several times. The last one being uh, in March. Did you ask Mr. Chengkam Lam? I think we should direct the question to the Tourism Commission first and ask them to forward the question to Mr. Chengkam Lam. Have you asked the same question, Mr. Chengkam Lam? I'm sorry. Uh, I was just reminded that we may need to wrap up soon. Every time if there are, quest there are questions from the Audit Commission, if these questions are directed to the organizer, we would always forward them to the uh, organizer. Mr. Chen Kamlam, could you provide us with all such information we, so that we can clarify this issue? I'll ask the masters to uh, you know, provide such information. We need to you know, do this in a fair and transparent manner. Also regarding quotations, I must also clarify with the Audit Commission that at the time when we put in the application, we stated clearly to the to the mega fund as to how much a dragon and a, a lion would cost. All those are uh, spelled out clearly. But then, in all the documents that we have, we are not able to. Uh, it may be in the application form. It's page eighty-five uh, of the bundle. It, it, all the information uh, is there. Gen 8, page 85. Uh, we've clearly listed all the numbers. That is the projected expenditure and how it, it's uh, worked, how it is arrived at. All right, please give us such information. Uh, or would you like to uh, go on to the next question, or would you like to save it for our next meeting? Uh, could we extend for 10 minutes, Commissioner, uh, or 15 minutes, uh, Secretary? Is that okay with you? Okay, thank you. Mr. Portier asked a question which I'd like to follow up on. Uh, 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 I'd like to ask the director of audit if the auditor is to cons is a consultant or advisor to the company. Is this person uh, can this person be regarded as an independent auditor, according to the code of conduct? If he is the consultant uh, to that company, would not his pay, chairman? Of course, the situation would depend on the circumstances. It would depend what sort of uh, consultancy service he has provided uh, and whether he had been paid. The HK, uh, the uh, ICPA also had laid down certain uh, principles. Many non-profit making organizations uh, 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 would retain uh, on advisors. Uh, I like to uh, go to page 37C of the Audit uh, Commission's report. I understand that Mr. Chen Kam Lam will be uh, providing the relevant uh, quotations and invoices. He has undertaken to do that already. I also like to request something from the administration. Every time we ask questions about expenditure items, uh, the government say that these are not the items that we, we, we uh, funded. Now, for C1 to C4, you, 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 you subsidize more than $1 million each year. I'd like to know uh, 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 whether you have detailed breakdowns of the activities or items uh, which the MEF had uh, funded. Uh, Mr. Chin Kamla would also like to answer the question. I'd like to further clarify that I will try my best to ask the masters and the relevant organizations to uh, 
uh, to to provide the list of participants, but I can't give any guarantee because we're talking about things which happened a few years ago. Mr. Chiam Lam, I'd like to also ref uh, remind you that according to the agreement uh, uh, in 12.1, you need to retain the, the information for seven years. Well, but but the, uh, those information is not in my keeping. Yes, yes. If it is in my keeping, if it is under my control, I can show, provide them to the committee at any time. According to the uh, contract, it is the responsibility of the applicant to retain such information for seven years. Also, I find it rather odd when I look at the audit report. Let's look at Gen 7. That's the audit report for C3. Gen 7 would be uh, the audit report for 2013 or event C3. Page 123. Obviously, it is obvious that the auditor's report is that he applied? Never mind the quotations and so on. Anyway, there are records of all the receipts. If you look at the uh, uh, funding agreement, it is stipulated that the applicant will need to keep retain all the invoices and so on. For C1, C2, and C3. We're talking about procurement from connected parties and so on, but uh, it is surpri a surprise that nobody had actually looked at this. Well, how can the auditor provide an opinion? Uh, I mean, uh, like this. I would like to put this on record. Could anyone explain, uh, anyone present here, uh, explain why that is the case? Uh, can anyone explain this point? Chairman. I don't think the connected organization is an issue. It's still there because I already explained to members that right from the beginning, whether it's in our application form or whether in our presentation or in our report, uh, uh, we have provided sufficient disclosure. We have provided information of all the coordinators. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the invoices. Uh, we have the invoices. The, the, the expenses they have incurred, the, 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 uh, payment that they have received, and for example, expenses on costumes and props, they're all backed up by invoices. Yes, you can provide such invoices. Yes, yes, certainly. All right, then, uh, can we stop after you've, uh, this question? Would you let me, you know, be the first to, to ask questions in the next meeting? Okay. Paul, would you uh, 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 be willing to let Mr. Chen to 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 to, to you know be the first to ask questions, uh, Chairman? Uh, you gave Mr. Alan Leung more than an hour just now. Okay, I exercise my discretion and let you start uh, at the next meeting, Chairman. Uh, I will put a, ask a simple question for C3. If we look at Gen Seven, could members? Uh, go to page 215. Uh, here we find some photos. And this is the uh, publicity report uh, where we find photos of the publicity done. And I simply don't understand that the Hong Kong Asia's World City, and on page 216, this uh, flying dragon symbol of the flying dragon. I don't know how, whether this is connected to the dragon and lion dance extra, extravaganza. Has the administration really studied the report? If you look at the photo of P215, it said, acknowledges uh, Professor uh, Yu Zhongyi for, <coughs> you know, his calligraphy. Uh, but these are actually uh, letters are printed and not handwritten. Why do you acknowledge the master for his calligraphy? What sort of photos are these? Has the administration really studied the report at all? Chairman. Other than promoting the uh, Lion and Dragon Dance extravaganza every year, we'd also, you know, uh, 
uh, deploy additional resources to promote Hong Kong as the Asia's world city. And so in our budget, we have actually uh, done uh, something extra to promote Hong Kong's tourism. Professor Yu Chung Yi had actually, well, you know, <coughs> uh, you know, uh, wrote some. Uh, 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 it's on the letterhead that that is you can find the calligraphy of the professor uh, uh, for us. So we, in order to acknowledge the uh, the support from this uh, uh, master. So we always uh, acknowledge the master, so the people know that this is really valuable calligraphy, and we were able to have the support of them. Professor, uh, have you looked at the photos? We also, uh, during the time when the event was being staged, our colleagues have actually seen such banners at the scene of the event, and these. Banners are typically displayed when we promote uh, Hong Kong's mega events. Kenneth, then uh, could you continue the questions the next time? I'm sorry for having overrun a little bit today. Well, I'll give you more time at the next meeting. When is the next meeting scheduled for? We have a few dates for our next meeting. 4.30 to 7.30 Monday, and then Tuesday, 9 to 1. Kenneth, is that okay for you? Paul? Monday meaning the 9th. I have to go to Nanjing. Uh, I won't be in town on Monday and Tuesday. So long as you have a representative present, that's fine. Uh, you're available on Monday. Okay, why don't we do it on Monday then? Monday is the 9th, day after tomorrow. Okay, half past four. So, so if uh, or you think about that, if there are questions that you cannot answer, uh, it will be in, in our report. I know that they can answer you, the questions, but it will be best for you to answer the question yourself. You won't be in Hong Kong. What is more important than your reputation as a chairman? I may be a bit late on Monday. Okay, we will. We will. Uh, okay, we won't be meeting on, on Tuesday. You need to attend the EXCO meeting, which is more important than our hearing. We understand that. Thank you very much.